That's a nice, healthy female. She's at least 10 or 12 years old. As they, 12 years old. They, How long do they normally live to? They're long lived. They don't have a lot of predators once they reach this size. Um, uh, certainly a couple decades anyway. Um, it takes them 10 or 12 years to get from that little free floating nymph to a mature adult. And then if they're lucky, they might have a pretty good long life ahead of them. They're an ancient animal. You know, you can easily picture them swimming around in prehistoric truth seas with trilobites and things like that. They're a successful design. They've been here a long time. Um, they're distantly related to things like scorpions and spiders, arachnids. They are not crustaceans like crab, shrimp, or lobsters. People are always worried, the crab name or whatever, it's, you know, these things, they don't pinch, they don't, they don't bite, they don't sting. Okay. I mean, you wouldn't want to step on the end of their telson. Right. That wouldn't be good. The males have these little like boxing gloves on the end of the legs here, and that mm -hmm. helps them grab onto the females with a good firm grip. And uh, it's just gonna use these little uh, arms to put stuff in the mouth. The mouth is right, right in through here. It really, you can see their distant relationship to things like spiders with that kind of rough looking mouth in there. And these are what are called the book lungs here. This is how it breathes, sort of like gills on a fish. The foundation thing is you got these horseshoe crabs out in the bay that are coming up to spawn. Because of all these eggs they're depositing, all these birds, many of which are coming from as far away as like Tierra del Fuego and Argentina, are coming here making a gigantic marathon flight and they really need these horseshoe crab eggs to be here so they can put their weight back on. They'll like double their weight in a matter of days and, and then take off and fly nonstop sometimes for thousands of miles. We've got uh, probably, I would say, at least about a dozen species of shorebirds that the eggs are a major food source and probably at least half a dozen that they are a completely critical food source for. The red knot, ruddy turnstones, semi-palmated sandpiper. We're seeing mostly semi-palmated sandpipers today. The little brown guys, the yeah. The little brown guys. Uh -huh. Right now, they're halfway through their northward migration, flew thousands of miles, lost all this weight they'd fattened up in South America. They're here. They're trying to madly replenish on those horseshoe crab eggs and, and go up to Arctic Canada to breed. I've tried these horseshoe crab eggs. They're not quite that good, but um, I'm sure if you've just flown in from Brazil, they're pretty welcome. <laughs> As the tide goes back, first we'll see a bunch of crabs, and the birds are going to just scatter. Wow, look at Here, that one. Here's a pair of horseshoe crabs coming in right now. The, the little male is hooked on to the larger female. You know, the trick here is they're trying to come up, deposit the eggs in the sand, and the eggs take about 28 days to hatch until you get your next big set of tides, and hopefully that washes the babies out and back into the bay. Again, it's not precise and there's a lot of, you know, <laughs> uh, a lot of casualties, but ideally that's what happens. Get a few of these old girls back to the water. Let's do that. I've been holding you upside down long enough. <laughs> okay. And plop. Oh, that's a big one. We can find that one. <laughs> yeah. We seem to find the biggest one. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah, the big old girls.